Wow, check it out, it's the Edge joystick. But is it really as good as what the company claims? In this video, we're going to be doing an unboxing and we're going to be doing a little bit of gameplay with this uh, Edge joystick by Emo. Stay tuned. my YouTube viewers retro pro Frank with another installment today I want to take this uh, time right now uh, this opportunity to say uh, happy new year to you and yours okay I wishing you guys uh, a great 2017 now moving right along here I got the edge joystick here it was actually given to me as a gift for Christmas from a very good friend of mine thank you thank you so much by the way um, he was going to hold on to it for a bit and give it to me on New Year's, but I guess he's seen my NES Mini uh, review there and unboxing, so he, th he got a little nervous thinking that I was going to, you know, get my hands on this when he already had a button, so once again, thank you very much uh, for the controller, you know who you are, you're awesome, you rock, I, guys, I got great friends. Anyway, so what are we looking at here? So this is the Edge joystick, this is the Gamer's Advantage joystick, okay, made by Emo. First thing you're going to notice is that it, it's not, it doesn't have Nintendo seal of approval right off the bat, okay? So in the front, let's take a look at the front, it's got the Edge joystick um, for the NES Classic and the Wii U, um, 9 foot cable, okay? So that's a little bit better than what Nintendo did. Um, then it says something about a cheat code book, bonus cheat code book included. I'm going to turn to the right here. And okay, so now it says the the Edge joystick, the gamer's advantage. Okay, and it shows uh, the joystick there. And enjoy the arcade experience at home. All right, let's take a look at the back here. So on the back here, uh, for the NES uh, Classic Edition, the Wii U, nine foot cable, Turbo Fire, um, the Edge joystick, gamer's advantage, and it shows you all the different uh, buttons and I guess what they do. One uh, joystick. Turbo B, Turbo A, on, off, okay, so it's got all that. And on the other side here, specs that the controller has. Uh, so you can see it's got a turbo on and off, uh, and then it says something with the joystick. is a digital 8-way input with circular gate. Okay, so that looks like an arcade joystick. Uh, micro switches, see, it's funny because I've seen micro switches like these. So I guess they're using... Um, what we use today now and what has been used for very many years in arcades are these micro switches here it's just a little switch that when you press it it makes the circuit it completes the circuit and that's underneath and that normally gets wired up to a pcb board or a jamma harness depending on what you're running with arcades okay so that's the exact same kind of micro switches and this style is the more economical one see how it's short there there's a longer one there so i'll show you that there see how the one's longer there Okay, so that's it gets screwed on it gets screwed in by the bottom by like a washer and then this one kind of just clicks into place here. So these are like more of the economical style buttons you can get for arcades and then it's got a slow A and B together. Back up front, let's get the good old knife here guys and we're just going to cut along the sides here. Okay. Perfect. All right, let's open her up then, okay? So yeah, so this is actually uh, a replica. They, they made pretty much a replica of the NES Advantage controller, which was actually, it was an arcade controller uh, back in the late 80s, okay? It was actually a really good controller. Um, so this is a replica of that. So let's unbox this here. So we got a piece of protective wrap there. The controller here and any other goodies in there? Yep, we got a book here. And we also have a user's manual. Okay, so let's take a look at this uh, user's manual. Okay, the Edge joystick. It's got a couple pages, it's fold out. It just tells you more about the controller. Okay. Any questions you have on it are answered here or gonna be in this video. And then this is pretty cool. Classic cheat codes edition. It includes Mega Man 2, 
Punch-Out, Castlevania, Zelda 1 and 2. 25 more games. Okay, so I think that this is a cheat code just for the games on the NES Mini. Yeah, that's that's it. So it's just a, a cheat code book for the games on the NES Mini, which is really cool. It shows the overview world of uh, Zelda there. Gives you some tips. You know, that's actually in different language. So let's start with the front. You got Balloon Fight there. You got some tips on Donkey Kong. Double Dragon. Code. What's this? Retry stages two and three. Up, right, down, left, A, B. Hmm, that's this is pretty good information. Like, I'm pretty sure it's all online, but... You know, you got Excite Bike here. There's some codes in it. You got yourself, give yourself uh, full power-ups on this one. Yeah, it's a very nice book, okay? The papers feel nice. Uh, the printing looks very, very clean and shiny and glossy. It doesn't look cheap. It doesn't look like they cheaped out on this by any means, okay? So they give you some tips on all the kind of, the letter had to be dipped in water. See, guys? For, so for Star Tropics, the letter had to be dipped in water to reveal the secret password. So I guess it's going to be in this book here, okay? So you have, you know, some instructions on how to play the game, some of the background on it. So that's cool in this book. Now, to the bread and butter of this. Here is the replicated NES Advantage, okay? Um, yeah, the top doesn't feel too bad. It feels very strong. The bottom kind of feels uh, flimsy here, okay? The cords kind of feel a little bit thin, uh, you know? So let's uh, take a look what's in the bag here. Just gonna rip it open, boys and girls. Okay, so there we go. We got that standard connector here. Okay, we're gonna hook this up and try it in a minute. And it actually comes with this. For those of you who don't know what this is, I think this is to give you the option of changing the top out. See, this is like more of Japanese style control here, and this is more of an American fight style stick. So you can, you know, unscrew this like this if you don't want the Japanese style. Okay, and that comes off just like every other ball in arcade's existence. <laughs> and there you go. Now you have a. Now you have a fight stick. Now, are you going to need a fight stick with the 30 games included on this? Probably not. Um, the only kind of games I would play with this is like Pac-Man. Um, Mario would be kind of difficult to navigate. It's, it's a little bit easier with a D-pad. Okay, um, maybe Double Dragon would be good. Any kind of beat-em-up would be good with this. Uh, Double Dragon. I don't think I would be able to play Mega Man on this. Like, yeah, I would be able to, but... You know, you kind of need the, the feeling of the controller is what you need. So, this and a lot of the games, like, let's go through it for a sec here. So... Okay, so balloon, balloon Fight I wouldn't use. Bubble Bobble, I, I would use that. I could use that controller for Bubble Bobble because it's an arcade type game. See, but like Castlevania, I wouldn't want to use this, you know, I'd rather use a D-pad. Uh, Donkey Kongs, yes, I, I could use that. Double Dragon. Dr. Mario, I wouldn't want to use this. That's just me though, you, you know, everyone's different. Excite Bike, I wouldn't want to use this. You know, Final Fantasy, I would definitely wouldn't want to use this, okay? That's just me. That's just the way I am, okay? Because it's on, it's on a, like a grit pattern, the way you play Final Fantasy, when you choose between your fighting and running and all that stuff. Why would you use this? It's just easier with a directional pad. Uh, shooter, yeah, I guess I would use that on there. Okay, uh, Ice Climber, I wouldn't use that. That's, you know, the controls are so crappy in that game already as it is. I wouldn't use it on there. Kirby's, I would definitely not use it. Mario Brothers, yes. You know what? That's more of an arcade-style game. So I can see myself using it there. Uh, nice spread of Mega Man 2 there. Wowzers. Uh, Metroid, I probably wouldn't use it. Ninja Gaiden. Sorry, Ninja Gaiden. I don't think I would use this. Um, that game is so difficult already, the way it is, the way the enemies respond. and um, I think the, the normal D-pad would be a lot better in getting farther in Ninja Gaiden. Pac-Man, definitely I would use this. Uh, Puncho, no chance would I use that. Uh, Star Tropics, I guess you could. Mario 1, 2, and 3, I guess you could, but I wouldn't want to use it. 
Uh, Super Bowl, Tecmo Super Bowl, I wouldn't use it. Zelda, definitely not. Link, definitely not. In reality, if this was like Super Nintendo, for example, and they came out with something like this, yes, that'd be great because it's more of arcade type games, you know what I mean? So it's it's more of a luxury to have, you know, it's, it's nice to see, but uh, me personally, I, I wouldn't go out and, and buy this thing because, well, I guess if you if you like the box and everything and displaying that these items as a collector, I guess, you know, you might want it, but... I mean, like for gameplay, you know, I know what it feels like because they're they're just a it's just a micro switch. There's four different micro switches behind here, and you can hear it clicking. They actually feel really good. Now here are these buttons here. They feel really cheap. Like I'm not gonna lie, like they just feel big, plastic, and cheap. Um, these buttons don't feel too bad. The knobs feel good. But yeah, let's uh, let me get the original uh, NES Advantage, and let's uh, compare next to it, shall we? All right, guys. So here's the original from back in the '80s NES Advantage, and right off the bat, you can tell that it's a lot thinner. Okay. Uh, the reason for it, uh, right off the bat, I know the reason why this is so thick is because there is micro switches placed this way, so they need that extra space. Okay. So that's right off the bat. It's a lot bigger. I thought this was supposed to be the mini edition, right? <laughs> these buttons are a hell of a lot bigger than these. Uh, these are pretty accurate, okay? Now, another thing, one thing that's not the same as the original NES Vantage is the actual connector. Not just because um, it's an NES style connector, because that there's actually two. So you were able to plug this into player one and player two, and if you look over here, there was a selection here on the original for player one and player two. So say you're playing Mario Brothers two player. When you were Mario and you were playing, you'd have it switch to player one. And then when you died, you would switch it for player two so that they can use this controller on Luigi. So yeah, so the heights, uh, you know, this is a lot bigger, at least a half inch to an inch bigger. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, width. The width is pretty much bang on. Okay, the overall design, you know what, the grooves and the plastic and everything, they look pretty much similar, okay? Except for this one says Nintendo branded and this one says Emu on the, on the bottom. Uh, the weight difference, wow. This is probably twice as heavy as this one, okay? Uh, one good reason for it is the back of the original has this steel plate on the back here, okay? And um, yeah, this there's actually a motherboard behind this. There's no micro switches. See how you how you turn it and you don't hear nothing? Listen. Here, I'm actually gonna put my microphone close, guys, so you guys can hear it. So here's the original NES. Okay. And here is the emo version. Okay, and the reason I got the mic there is because I want you guys to actually hear it. Okay, so it sounds like an arcade, okay? So back in the day when this was launched, okay, so this was uh, Nintendo's ver version, this was their NES Advantage, which actually was in the movie Ghostbusters. Take a look at this. That's so awesome how that was in there, okay? It's just in there for just like a millisecond, it looks modified, but... That's what it is, it's the NES Advantage uh, driving the Statue of Liberty, okay? So, like I was saying in the beginning of the video, there's there's always been third-party developers. So here was QuickShot's um, <laughs> answer to the NES Advantage back in the day. So it pretty much had the same kind of stuff, player one, player two. It had the same two connectors, which I'm really... I'm really shocked Emo didn't include two connectors, you know? Because even this aftermarket... Uh, quick shot here that pretty much essentially did the same thing and is quiet as hell uh, did the exact same thing as the NES Advantage were pretty close to it you know I think that this was a hell of a lot cheaper too this was like 20 30 dollars cheaper back then 20 30 bucks was like 50 today so uh, a lot of us got this alright so this is you know this is really plastic it's kinda junky it works but so here's the original here, and here's the replica, which is a lot bigger and a lot thicker. Even the balls are different sizes here. So um, let's uh, bring you guys into the computer room here. Let's hook this bad boy up to the NES Mini, and let's give her a shot. 
All right, so we got the NES Mini all hooked up, and we got the uh, the Advantage replica here hooked up. Let's uh, fire her up here. There we go. Okay, so it's working. That's a good sign. A lot of people were saying that these don't work for some reason, but it's working. Okay, let's uh, try it on on Pac-Man. Uh, start. We're just gonna try some Pac-Man real quick, guys. All right, well, Pac-Man feels pretty good. Let's try something else. Okay, one player. Very loud, very loud. And it feels a little bit light too. Like, I mean, if you go left, it almost wants to raise up off the uh, table or wherever you put it. So it's responding to A and B combos. Ooh, I'm getting my ass handed to me real good. Yeah, so you're gonna be hearing a lot of that. So it is like an arcade experience. They, you know, they are right. You know, it's uh, it makes it feel more arcadey, I guess. But boy, is it ever loud! And it's like when you hit it, you can just hear the hollowness of in the inside of this thing. So. She feels okay. If I could perform moves, you know, with with ease, like the double, the sorry, the single jump, you gotta press A and B together, and then press B to kick. It's actually it feels really good. It feels good. It just doesn't feel heavy enough. You know, it's you know, I know they save a hell of a lot of money on the shipping. You know, and that comes into factor even when they design it. But I mean, I always get confused. Okay. Yeah, it feels good. Let's try something else out. Yeah, like another arcade classic. So this would be good for that, that's for sure. Well, look at that. I'm not even touching this controller and it's going. Like, is that normal? Look at that. My guy's shooting. I'm not even touching the controller. Look at that. <laughs> there we go. So I guess I had it on slow mo there. Let's try that uh, turbo again. Yeah, look at that though. It's not on slow mo. As soon as I press turbo, look guys, look at the look at the look at the glitches in this thing. As soon as I press turbo, well, I'm off the screen now. But look, look, it's not even shooting, right? As soon as I press turbo, it's just automatically fires. Look at that. I'm not touching these buttons. You would hear it. <laughs> So I don't know if it's just this game or what it is, but you know, it's just, a, it, it kind of feels a little cheap to be honest. Yeah, that's about all I would use it for. Bubble Bobble. Let's try this one out. What does Turbo do? Oh no, it is working, it's working, it's working. Okay, so for it, it's for each button is what it is. But wow, on, on, on the Galaga there, that was actually shooting for no reason. Anyway. Anyway, guys, this controller, yeah, I guess it's uh, a little bit of fun. You know, I don't think it is perfected because it was shooting turbo without me even touching the button. But if you guys want to have a more arcade type of experience with the NES uh, Classic here, this would be the way to go. Uh, out of 1 to 10, I would give it about a 6 to 7, maybe 6 7. You know, it's uh, the gameplay feels really good. It feels like an arcade. All right, well, there you guys have it. Uh, the unboxing and the review of the uh, Emo, uh, the Edge joystick. Actually, yeah, guys, I can recommend it. I thought it was, you know, I don't like the fact that it wasn't Nintendo brand, but, you know, they uh, there's always been third-party developers for controllers since the beginning of video games. Anyway, guys, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up if you guys like this video. Give me a thumbs down if you're miserable and you hate everything about life. <laughs> Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, okay? I could use all the subscribers I can get. We're almost at a thousand, guys. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. This is Retro Pro Frank, and I'm out. Thanks for watching the video. If you guys like this video, go ahead and press the like button below. 
and uh, you guys can leave some comments uh, below in the comments section of the video. Please share this video on Facebook pages to your friends and family. As well as if you guys like this video, please subscribe. This is Retro Pro Frank. Thanks for watching. I'm out.